thank you to the Creative Mornings team uh, for putting this together. We're, we're you know, honored to have you all here. Also, thanks to Jonathan. Jonathan Kaplan, where are you? Put your hand up. Jonathan's involved in Creative Mornings. And also works out of our office next door at the workspace and has been hugely supportive, so thank you. Um, so show of hands. I love that we have a topic here to kind of work off of, and honesty is a, a good one. Um, who wakes up in the middle of the night stressing out about work, about things like that? <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Same here. And, and there's been a lot of that over the past couple of years that we've been building this place. And I think that the subject of honesty and waking up in the middle of the night sort of dovetail nicely because I've had to learn on, on my own, you know, just building this place out with Kristen, my wife, you know, this is not something that came to us naturally. We, we've built houses for a long time. We, we, you know, we're home cooks. We, we love food, we love wine, we love design. And so suddenly when the opportunity kind of popped up to, to do this, um, we had to basically figure it all out. And it was not sort of something that we were used to doing. Um, so there was a lot of sleepless nights, and now our whole team is on Slack, which is great, so I'm no longer emailing them at 3 o'clock in the morning because they can snooze them. So basically, I'm sure they get a flurry of things from me in the morning, but one thing I've learned is before I go to bed, just feeling like, you know, everything that I did throughout that day was, was honest, and we weren't cutting corners. And I think throughout this whole process, um, whether it was, you know, planning it, going through city, permit, zoning, raising money, um, executing, dealing with the dark black holes that sort of came out that nobody could ever expect, and that, that runs from any startup to a construction project to anything. Um, knowing that we didn't cut corners has enabled me to really sleep well at night, and I think that's been an important sort of part of this whole process. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think um, having to be brutally honest about did we do something the right way? Could we have saved money doing something differently? Could we have gotten our liquor license a different way? Or could we have gotten our CFO and opened up two months earlier? You know, all those things are certainly things that we could have done, but I think at the end of the day now that we're, we're open and we have all these wonderful people here, um, it's nice knowing that we did things the right way, that, that honesty was sort of a key factor in all that, and, and that's not something that, you know, I went into thinking, okay, it's gonna be this way, it really just sort of it sort of happened, and there were a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of talks about how to do things. But I think when you get to the end of the road, knowing you did it one way, you know you did it without cutting corners has been, uh, has been really important to us. Um, the other things that I wanted to talk about are basically being honest with yourself um, when embarking into a new endeavor. Um, I think when we started this thing, there was probably a little bit of an inkling of this could go sideways, you know, really, really badly and look terrible and we could lose a lot of money and, you know, all these things could go wrong. So I think when you look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, you know, here are the things that could go wrong, here are the things that could go well, um, here, here are the, the things that are going to change, you know, my life over the past year and a half. I mean, it's certainly changed, you know, a very solid little fi family dynamic that we had where, you know, I was home at five o'clock every day cooking dinner and having this wonderful time with my wife and then two kids, now three kids. And, you know, there's been a lot of sort of deep discussions about um, what's our timeline? How, how are we going to know when this is working? You know, how do we feel about the fact that this has really changed our lives? So I think when, when one is, for me anyway, you know, embarking into a new project, a new startup, a new whatever it is that anybody in this room might be doing on the creative front, I think being honest with oneself about, you know, hey, how is this gonna change my life? And am I okay with that? You know, I think that's, that's, a, that's a big one that, that we, we had to think about, that Kristen and I had to think about, that I'm sure all of you have to think about as you, you know, as you go about your daily kind of work lives. Um, and then I think also a really important one is just the connection between honesty and vulnerability. And I think the two really go together very, very well. One thing I've learned is um, I don't know everything. You know, I, I sort of knew my things in, in the box that I worked in. And as we started, you know, we started Grandview, and then we opened six months ago, and it was this crazy flurry of activity, and then we got through the summer. And I think being a little bit vulnerable with the people around us, with all of our vendors who have been here throughout, you know, the, the kind of trials and tribulations of this place, um, being able to talk to them and being able to say, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, so how do you want to do this? Or this might not work, how do you think we should do that? I think you know, a lot of times you'll go into something 
and say, well, well, you know, I put this together, I know best, we're gonna do it my way. And I think it took me a little bit of sort of time to turn the ship and say, I actually don't know everything, and these guys around me and these women around me do know a lot more than I do, so, so let's ask them, and, and let's all kind of come up with sort of a transparent community decision, and I think that's been hugely important in terms of everybody getting along, everybody getting through the summer, and as we, you know, try to set this market here on its own course, knowing that everybody's sort of working together on that path and me not trying to tell them what to do has been huge. Lastly, um, again, I think it sort of comes down to being able to ask other people around you questions. You know, and again, while I've asked all of our partners here in the market, you know, there's just a lot of people, architects, finance people, food and beverage people, we've had to learn a lot very, very quickly. And I, I think that, you know, Things have turned out well so far. We're, we're, we're super happy with, with, with that. But I think, you know, for me, the biggest thing has been sort of an ego check and saying, again, let's ask people around us who are professionals who know their stuff. And, uh, you know, we're all just going to be stronger for it. So that's sort of all I have to say about honesty. And I, I thank you all for coming here. If this is your first time, thanks so much. We hope you enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I think we've got a lot of wonderful stuff in store for everybody over the year, and we're just trying to make it better every day. So thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to pace a lot. I'm a walker. Like <laughs> motion creates emotion. Uh, so my name's Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of Celis, as she just said, in Crumber Rolls. Um, you know, to me, honesty, and, and not to sound cheesy or like a Hallmark card, but it's, uh, it's staying true to yourself. You know, believing what your core values are is gonna kind of guide you and lead you in the right direction. When we started Cellus, my brothers and I, I had no idea what I was doing. I was an insurance agent before, I did mortgages before that. Uh, we we're really just piecing together all the pies. Uh, and it finally came into fruition. We started, you know, learning from all of our mistakes. And the most important thing was, all right, stay focused, stay true to yourself, because there's gonna be a lot more complications in the future. Uh, being a, an entrepreneur, small business owner, uh, there's a lot of struggles. It's not blue skies and rainbows. Uh, there's probably more struggles than, than actual successes. And you know, we're still figuring that out as we go till this day. Uh, you know, when, when we look back, one of our biggest successes is just our work ethic. You know, we look at, you know, my, my parents, they came here in the early 80s. My parents work twice as hard as we do. They're up at the crack of dawn. They're not getting home till 9 p.m. And, you know, we've learned from, from them and created this work ethic that we've instilled into ourselves based off of what they've demonstrated to us. And that's also one of the main reasons why, you know, we've, been able to kind of get where we're at and, and continue working to do so. So I didn't prepare anything. I didn't write anything. I'm, I'm winging this as I go. And, you know, also talking about honesty, I, I hate public speaking. <laughs> I really do. I feel like if I prepare something, I'm just going to get even more nervous. So I was like, you know what? Let me just go. I'm just going to talk to 140 people or 200 people. I'm going to wing it. Um, but you know, honesty is, again, staying true to yourself. When, when you start a small business, I mean, raise a hand. Who's, who here is, is a small business owner or an entrepreneur? <laughs> you know, keep your hands up if you, you know, feel more struggles than you do successes. <laughs> you know, when you're getting 40 phone calls a day that make you feel completely unproductive because it's, you know, this person's running late or this point of sale isn't working or this, I mean, it's just constant uphill battles, uh, but I love it. You know, I wouldn't, I would never change it for the world. I, it's something that I will continue to do. You know, continue doing, say, staying true to myself. You know, keep, uh, you know, bringing more creativity to the city. Being born and raised in West Palm, I've seen a lot of change. There was times where you have to sprint by Publix at the city place because you didn't want to get beat up. You know, now you could walk and you could enjoy. You could go to wine scene, you could walk to the Publix without having you know, to look behind your back. It's, you know, West Palm has changed and has evolved so much. Uh, my brothers and I are so excited that we're you know, one of the reasons behind it. Uh, and 
you know, Grandview has been such a, a great addition to it. Looking at creative mornings and seeing all these different faces that I've, you know, some of you I recognize, some of you I don't. But these are things that I never thought could happen in West Palm Beach. You know, I've seen West Palm go through a lot of struggles and I've seen West Palm, you know, on the up and up. And right now we're, you know, we're definitely on the up and up and it's, it's really exciting. Uh, what else can we talk about? <laughs> I feel a little more comfortable. <laughs> oh, we could talk about product. So, you know, when it comes to product and what you're putting out there. So, Cellus, we strive on, you know, selling organic products or all natural products. To me, product is everything. If, if you walk into a store and, you know, you could cut corners and purchase something that's been mass produced uh, or purchase something that you really don't know where it comes from, you know, that's a disservice to you. And the reason is, is because you are, like you're, you're your most important asset. You gotta take care of yourself. You gotta know what's coming, you know, what you're consuming, what you're eating, because at the end of the day, it's, it's just gonna be better for you. Uh, she gave me the one minute sign, I think two minutes ago. So uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I sat here in the front row. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Yes. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my background. It has been retail since the day I could sign up for my first job. 16 years old, I marched into the Gap, and I just knew that was for me. <laughs> Ten years later, I left the Gap. So if you need a good pair of jeans folded, I'm your chef. <laughs> so, I had a minor detour into the world of nonprofit fundraising, but after sitting, it was wonderful, but sitting in an office behind a computer, no windows, wasn't for me. I had to get back out there and talk to people. So my real dream was to actually own my own shop. And in July of 2009, I was told that the owners of a local stationery store were looking for a buyer. I've been a paper nerd as well as a retail nerd <laughs> as long as I can remember. Hence, notebook in hand always feel it's like my safety blanket. Um, when I was a kid, give me stickers, a notepad, a pen. I, I was a happy camper. So I thought. Could this actually happen? It did, and it happened really quickly. <laughs> in September of 2009, I took the big leap, and I was the proud owner of Station on Sunrise. There were some challenges that came that I wasn't anticipating of actually owning an existing business. The business had been there for over 20 years. So I thought, I love paper. Been there for 20 years. This will be a breeze, no problem. I slid in there thinking I had this all figured out. Little did I know, I was completely wrong. <laughs> there was a lot to learn. And I was told no one was gonna want change in that business. The customers, the vendors told me, the previous owners told me, this is the way it is, this is the way it's been, don't change a thing, no one's gonna want it. Well, that wasn't sitting well with me. <laughs> I knew that I had a vision for my shop and my brand, and I needed to be true to that. So a few months later, I had the opportunity to go to my first trade show. Went in there feeling really good, flew to New York, new outfits, Nice hotel room, walked into the Javits Center, feeling really confident, like, I got this, no problem. Probably cocky more than confident, actually, is the word. <laughs> Flash forward to about six hours later, me sitting on my hotel room floor, surrounded by all the catalogs of the new vendors that I had found, and it hit me. I actually have no effing idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm gonna fail at this miserably. <laughs> so I pretty much sat on the floor and sobbed for about the next hour. I mean, one of those, like, really ugly, can't catch your breath kind of cries. <laughs> so I left New York feeling pretty defeated, came back to Palm Beach. I was ready to remodel the store, bring in all my new merchandise, and I kind of didn't know up from down at this point. And I thought, that's it, this is not gonna work. I'm about six months in and I can't do this. And that's when it took me in that moment to realize I had to be honest with myself and I wasn't gonna be able to do this alone. I had to use my friends and family as my support and delegate some things, which I wasn't so great at a while ago. I used to say, I got this, I got it, I got it. I couldn't get it anymore. I needed to ask for help. So I did, and I learned, and we grew, and we succeeded with change. In fact, it was welcomed with open arms after I've told it wasn't, <laughs> and people loved the new product. And it allowed me to grow not only my business, but more in my personal growth. And I realized that 
running my business wasn't really gonna be how I ran my business. It was gonna be how I ran my mind. I needed to have the right mindset for it. And that took me a while to figure out. So nine years later, I was presented with the opportunity to meet Chris. And we had a very quick meeting. It happened again very quickly. Lots of drive-bys on Sunrise Ave <laughs> and Ave meetings. And I was told I was gonna have the opportunity to open a home goods shop here. So it has been a wonderful experience. I'm learning every day to embrace the days that I have my shit together. <laughs> also embrace the days that I feel like I'm losing my shit. <laughs> and just learning as we grow. And that is, I think, the most important thing that you can do in any aspect of any business is continually being open to trust yourself, be honest with yourself, and learn how to make it happen. Guys, I'm Clay. Uh, I recognize a lot of you, and this is really cool, uh, having everybody here together and kind of providing this platform. Um, I'm gonna get right to it, though. Um, by the way, their bar has mezcal all the time, and if it's out, it's because of my crew, for sure. Um, but, uh, but I wanna kinda get to it. Uh, there's like two, two aspects of honesty when I think about it. First of all, I think about how dishonest that I can be sometimes, maybe with like, fibbing to my kids or something, they'll ask me what something is and I'll say it's something else because they're young and, and, and literally ignorant to, to everything. So that's like one side, right? And then there's the other one where you're like, okay, you know, I wanna talk about honesty, but I wanna like not be a hypocrite, right? Because everybody wants to talk about how like cool it is to be honest, but nobody really wants to admit like the dark side of dishonesty, right? So, um, so there's two, there's like the, your life, you know, uh, I don't know, gym, family, kids, you know, uh, wife and all that, you know, and then there's like there's like business, right? And then they can be two separate. Uh, so I've just kind of treated everything the same, you know. Uh, I've been running, you know, uh, bigger restaurants for a really long time. I just turned 34 last year. I think uh, I was executive chef first at 23, so I had to pick up on the honesty, just tell it like it is thing, like right away. Uh, I didn't have much time to stop and think about it or else I was gonna get ran over, uh, particularly working and running restaurants in other countries, in other languages, and things like that. Like if you're not you know, with it, you find yourself you know, just kind of getting trampled on. So for me, uh, that was a challenge. So I run my family kind of the same way, uh, sometimes unfortunately, as I do a business, uh, because it's just really super straightforward. And my wife, she doesn't particularly care for that a lot of times. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's just how it works, you know. So like I said, um, you know, when it, when it comes to, you know, like loved ones and stuff like that, you know, sometimes you want to protect them from that. Like, oh, babe, how was your day? It's like, shit, you know, all this stuff went wrong. I've got negative, you know, $10,000 worth of, you know, bank account crap and whatever. You, know, you, you might want to, like, you know, hide that, right? So maybe that's, like, cool. But then again, I found that like, if you kind of talk about it a little bit, it's probably gonna make you feel better. You know, Chris was saying, you know, sleepless nights and all that stuff, like, you know, I definitely have those, you know, I definitely have those. And if you can just like let that all out, the second that it hits, you know, switching to the business side of things, you know, uh, being younger in the kitchen, you know, somebody, I forget who it was, one of my mentors for sure, but said, okay, well, the second that you run across a problem, address it right away. Just say, say something about it right away. It's like, okay, this arugula or whatever is, is wilted, right? Well, you can do two things, right? You can be checking somebody's workstation and see some things that are maybe subpar or some things that are good and you can just like, oh, okay, it's probably easier just to like uh, dodge this right now because you know, you don't want to cause confrontation, right? And so that's where dishonesty kind of connects with like being, you know, a non-confrontational person because maybe it's like harmless, right? Maybe you're not lying about like a murder you just committed, but maybe, maybe you don't want to get in a riffraff with the, you know, 19 year old kid that's on the salad station in the restaurant because of some wilted arugula. Me on the other hand, I'm super confrontational and I do not care about anything, <laughs> anything at all. Um, you know, it just, just right out of the gate, you know, it's just like, hey dude, this totally looks like shit, we gotta fix this right now. Oh, but I did it yesterday, I'm like, yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying it, so just fix it now, and then you move on, and then what you find is you didn't create, like, a bunch of problems that are building up and building up and building up through the day, that you have to extinguish the fire later. I have a, a really, really quick example that uh, happened just the other day. One of my cooks, you know, he texts me, he's like, hey man, you're gonna be around tomorrow? I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, hell no, dude, let's do this right now. You know, we're doing this right now. 
pulled him aside and said, hey, what's up, man? Be honest with me, man. What's, what's going on? Oh, it just so happens this other dude's not holding up his end of the, the bargain. He's not doing this. You know, maybe he's not working. I'm like, okay, cool. So what can we do about it right now? Well, what I did was, you know, solve the problem then and didn't ruin my Sunday off. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't ruin my day off because Buddy wanted to talk to me about, you know, something that was going down or something like that. So, you know, if we could just all be honest, you know, uh, you know, like I said, we're not going to be perfect, you know, by nature, I think we're all sinners, you know, in that aspect. But I think that if we could just be honest through our daily transactions, uh, whether it be with you saying hi or, or, oh, hey, do you like my shirts? Like, I don't know, man, not really, you know, like, you know, and, and, or, or, or like, you know, if somebody like products in, in particular, salesmen, products, you know, in this industry and basically all, you have uh, people come up to you and, you know, they'll be like, hey, you know. Uh, how's this? How did that taste? I'm going to be like, really, honestly, it just kind of tastes cheap and like, you know, not worth $19. Or like, oh, hey, what do you think about this piece of art? Not really my style. Like, don't want to see it in my restaurant. Like, oh, hey, what do you think about this, this font or whatever? I'm like, I think $130 is not worth this. Like, I don't want that. Because when it comes to, you know, honesty and, and frankly, you know, spending money and, and, and wasting money in that sense, you can't just do it. It's not a charity. Business is not a charity. Some... You know, sure, there's charity and then there's not. When it comes to spending money on products and things like that, you know, we're not in business, this particular business, for charity. Like, so I'm not just going to give you $200 for a product that I really don't, don't care for. So you just got to have to do it, you know. And you'll, you'll save a lot of time of your own and theirs. You know, some salesman comes around, he's like, hey, I got this stuff. I'd be like, dude, I'm sorry, I'm not really into it. They keep going, no, I'm serious. Like, I'm just not interested. Thanks, bye. That's it, you know. Uh, so that, that's a big one, you know. And, and, and honestly, um, you know, I was talking about the industry, but when I have a, a, a business partner, right, one, uh, we grew up together, all our lawyers told us, like, like, no, oh, man, you know, you guys really got to be friends, always screw things up and whatever. We're just like, no, nah, dude, seriously, like, no. And, uh, and, and, and for us, it is like, no, because we're super honest, you know. Uh, I'll get a good idea, you know. I talked to Chris, he's like, he's like yeah, dude, you, you want to do barbecue here? Let's do it. I'm like, yo, dude, Jesse, dude, we're about to do barbecue. And he's like, no, no, no. No, we're not, dude. Hold on a second. We got to talk about this. He always sees the worst in everything, but he's super successful. Like his the bank account just always grows, you know, and you know, mine just you know plateaus, and you know, uh, you know, and, and, and so and so I always have to just just be like, oh, okay, cool. But 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 what I do is I get really excited about things, right? Oh, cool, dude. We can do ten restaurants. A guy came up to me one day. This actually happened. Cool. We'll make a schedule, dude. We'll do five cholos, and you know. X amount of time, you just tell me where and we'll spot it out. I was like, all right, that sounds cool. And then I, uh, I, I called Jesse and he's like, so who's the guy? I'm like, oh, it's just, yeah, yeah what, dude, no. Like, well, you know, so I'll get excited and he'll bring me back down. And that's just because we're honest. That's just because we're honest, you know. Um, so, like I said, you know, it, 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 just, it just all ties in. And I, and, and I think it may be a character flaw how brutally honest I am about things. But uh, I think it's gotten me to, uh, to where I am, you know, for, for my story. Um, so I kind of just be myself all the time. And as much of an a-hole or whatever that is, it just, here we are, you know, <laughs> and I'm telling you about it. So, um, so it worked out. And honesty is, uh, you know, I suppose it's the best policy, right? Yeah. So, cool. Pleasure to be here, so thank you everyone for being here this morning. Uh, I want to start off just to, before we get into honesty, and I'll break it down into three core values for me of uh, where it all began. So for me, I did not want to be in the restaurant business at all growing up. You know, I have to, I've seen my parents work so hard and they instilled the Asian immigrant values onto me. Uh, you know, you might have all heard it. You need to be a doctor, you need to be a lawyer. Whatever it was, and for my family, it was a lawyer. So one thing led to another. Um, my mother started as a dishwasher. Now she owns restaurants. So you know she's somebody that I do look up to a lot. And for me, it wasn't until I moved to the DC area where I had to find myself. I left Florida, went to find myself in DC, did a lot of crazy stuff. I learned a lot, and I definitely learned a lot about honesty, okay? So today I want to break down honesty into three core things. It's food, religion, family, and friends. Okay. So I think I'll start off with 
Let's start over religion. Let's go with that. Um, so my background in religion is Buddhist, right? And some of you may know it's a religion, but for us it's more like, it's not really considered a religion, it's more of a way of life. So honesty is instilled into that. It's one of the precepts, and it's uh, how I carry myself every day. I try to live by that rule and that law, so it's something that makes me who I am today. And with being family, family is a very strong background, and they you know, push this religion onto us. But just being my family, seeing how hard my mother works, and learning honesty from a very young age. You know, Louis, did you do your homework yet? Yes. Finding out later that I did not do it, and getting a backhand later. <laughs> So that's honesty for me on the family side and you know leading with honesty is really almost integrity. If I say I'm going to do something then I really have to do it. That's something that I really have to learn the hard way and it's, it's something I, you know, has pushed me down before and it's something that I never ever want to do. You know, integrity is all you have as a person, for me anyways. And it's, um, it's something that I hold value to, it's ethics and morals and it is Chris asked me to do something. I'm always like, yeah, let's do it. And I want to stick through to my word. You know, no matter how crazy or how busy I get in my life, if I say I'm going to do it, just be honest with myself and be honest with the other person. That if I cannot do it, I'll just tell you I cannot do it. So that's something I learned with friends and family and learning about integrity and honesty. Um, honesty in my food. Uh, you know, some of you, can I see just raise a hand who's been to Pokey Lab and Ram Lab? Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. Uh, very grateful for that and so happy that you guys all got tried. Um, so honesty my food, it's more of a, our generation, our culture now, we all know where our food comes from, right? We, let's, let's say YouTube's the best school nowadays. I learn everything on YouTube or you, you do whatever. Uh, I had a chance to work with my mentor who's a Japanese chef and who's taught me a lot of the ways, and also just my family cooking, my grandmother's cooking, whatever it is. So I knew when opening a restaurant, I had to at least be true to my food. That means making things from scratch, either knowing where it's sourced from, at least going to see the distributor and being okay with what they're doing, you know, to make me feel comfortable with what I'm serving to you guys. And that really goes back to making everything from scratch. My mother, uh, excuse me, my grandmother is 75 years old, and if you guys have ever had the gyoza dumplings at any of our locations, you know, She's still there. When I tell the story, and it's very true, I can show you pictures, she's there on a table with her team of seniors just hand making dumplings. Right? It's, uh, it's something very, I guess, you don't see too much in these days in culture, but um, it's honesty in our food. You know, She doesn't want to stop, and I think it's great to have, and it helps everyone out. Um, so just going back to my main point, so, for me, it's about ethics, you know, things that have led into my life. This was a testimony for me getting into the restaurant business. Uh, being in DC, I did a food competition, which, uh, you know, I, it was against like 80 other businesses. I came up with a business plan. And if you guys have ever been to DC, there's a place called Union Market, very similar to Grand View. And this was a tipping point in my life where me and my friend, we did this competition. Uh, we got to the next stage, we did interviews for it, and we got into the finals, which was like, everybody seen Shark Tank before? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, got to the finals, you served your sample of food to 500 people. That, that food was, uh, everybody know what bao buns are? Steam white fluffy buns, like taco, just for some of that. Um, anyways, so, got to the finals of that, and it was at that point where, you know, me and my friend were like, man, I'm willing to quit my good paying corporate job work for a very good end company that paid a very good salary, that we're willing to quit our job just to do this full time. And that I knew was a tipping point for me and the testimony in my life leading back to where I am today. Where I'm like, okay, you know, I hated the restaurant. It's inescapable to me. Everything I do always leads me back to it. And here I am today, rather than fight against it, you know, just go with it and believe in myself and believe in what I've learned and what I've been taught as a kid and from my family and honesty. You know, the three key core topics of honesty for me. So, I know I got less than one minute, just gonna wrap it up. So that's a little bit about myself and that's a little about what honesty means to me. And I wanna say thank you everyone for coming out. I know I'm the last speaker. And if you ever wanna talk about any restaurant things or any food or just anything in general, I'm a very open person. So please stop by, ask questions and
Thank you, Nicole, and creative morning for all this opportunity. Thank you, Chris, for having me.